please make sure you're logging in with your original names and numbers. Anybody with other names will be removed from the list. Right, uh, we have 25 participants. We'll just wait for five more minutes. Uh, we'll start as soon as we reach 30. We have 27 participants. Right, we'll start off. We have 29 participants now. Uh, just to make sure that uh, everybody can hear me, uh, just give me a quick uh, feedback if you can hear me or not. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, great. So <clears throat> let's start off uh, uh, from where we left. Uh, uh, in the last class, we were at uh, the introduction to moments. I mean, we finished uh, the uh, concept of moments. We know what uh, a moment is. It's a tendency of a force to rotate a rigid body. Uh, I mean, it's basically when you're having a force that is being applied at a distance, which is exactly perpendicular uh, to the force being applied at a point of axis, there will be a rotatory motion that is happening. I mean, if you can see the screen that has been shared right now, uh, you can see that the wrench is turning a, a pipe. Now, the wrench is, is trying to induce a force of Fx at a distance dy. Now, this phenomenon of force F at a distance dy, which is exactly perpendicular to the axis O, will generate a rotatory force or a rotatory motion, circular rotational motion. This circular motion is called moment. It is depicted with M. And since it is happening at the point O, we will call that as moment at O. Now, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, now, there are two versions uh, or there are two instances where a moment can happen. It can happen in a clockwise direction or it can happen in an anti-clockwise direction, a positive or a negative uh, aspect. Now, 
if the rotational motion is happening in a clockwise moment, we can say it as a positive moment. If it is happening in a counterclockwise moment, we can say it as a negative moment. It can be said otherwise as well, but make sure you uh, use the same assumption all the way till the end of a given problem or a, a, any numerical. Uh, you can assume either way, but you have to make sure that you, it is the same throughout the entire problem. <clears throat> now, Let's just uh, have a quick uh, recap of what we had in the last class. Now, the application of movement, especially when it comes to structures in civil engineering, you have a typical beam. When a beam is undergoing bending at F, you can see a moment which is generated at the ends, that is A and B, which is equal to a distance of dA at point F. That will be F times dA, which is nothing but the moment that is generated at the supports. Now. This is one of the most common uh, condition which is seen in most of the structures out there and this has to be addressed in terms of the design part. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep everything to, to, to the basics. What is the fundamental of this particular moment? How the uh, moment has been uh, 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 formed? How, 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 what, what is the principle behind moment? Especially when we are talking about principles, there's something called uh, theorem of moments or in other words, it's called Varignon's theorem of moments. We'll also go through how we should uh, prove a Varignon's theorem of moments. And uh, let's just get on with it. <clears throat> we have 37 participants. Uh, we'll start off immediately. So there's another concept that uh, we will have to understand, which is called a couple. When it, it's kind of similar to moment, but not uh, exactly moment, because it has two forces that are being acting in opposite directions. Uh, both in uh, opposite and equal uh, strategy. When two forces which are acting opposite to each other in an equal fashion, there will be a turning force that is generated. Now that is a couple. Now the resultant force of the couple is always zero because these two are equal forces and they are going opposite in direction. When they go opposite in direction with equal magnitude, they tend to cancel themselves and that's the reason why uh, the resultant of that particular force is always zero. Now, there are two types of couple. Uh, couple. One is a clockwise couple and another is an anti-clockwise couple. When you're trying uh, uh, turning the force uh, in one particular direction, the, the, the moment of that particular uh, entity, if it's going in an anti-clockwise fashion, we call it as anti-clockwise and the other way around as well. Now, <clears throat> When we talk about equivalent force couple systems, now any set of forces on body can be replaced by a single force, just like your resultant, uh, which is the, the, when you resolve two kinds of forces into a single resultant force, you have P and Q. And when you try to resolve them, you get R, the resultant force. And it can, it can be done even in uh, a couple fashion as well. As you can see in the picture itself, in the diagram, uh, in the first part of the rectangular block, you can see, five forces that are being acted on top of the rectangular block of which four forces are being acted on the corners. These four forces that are acting in the corners will be generating a rotatory moment, uh, a turning force. Now that particular turning force can be equated, a, a, a statically equivalent uh, moment. It, it can be represented with a moment compared uh, with the same intention of the rotatory motion that is being happening in the first figure over there. Now, uh, the set of equivalent force and couple is known as equivalent force couple systems. Now, if there is an equivalent force, a, a, a combination, a group of equivalent force and a couple, this is completely known as equivalent force couple systems. It is necessary to know uh, this particular analogy. You will have to understand the definition of it. Next, moving on, yes, Varignon's theorem. This is the important part. Uh, I have arranged a small arrangement uh, in this session where I'll be able to solve it on paper and you, you will be able to see that. Uh, let's see how this works. So <clears throat> let's, first, let's just go, to, uh, go through the theorem. Varignon's theorem of moments. This is also known as the principle of moments, yes. The theorem states that the algebraic sum of the moments of individual forces of a force system about a point is equal to the moment 
of their resultant about the same point. Now, let's just divide this into two parts. Number one, sum of all the forces that are happening in the force system and that single resultant force. You have P, you have Q. Those are two forces that are happening in a force system. And by the virtue of P and Q, you can come out with a resultant force R. You resolve P and Q, you get R. Now, the moment, the sum of moments which is generated by P and Q is equal to the moment generated by the resultant R. That is what the Varignon's theorem uh, is stating. Now, we want to try, uh, we want to make sure that the theorem is appropriately correct or not. So, let's just uh, try to go through this uh, theorem in uh, solving session. I'll just try to change the angle of a camera to a much more convenient way. I hope you can, uh, I hope you all can see uh, this uh, sheet of paper. Okay, uh, can you see the sheet of paper? Can you uh, please give me a quick feedback? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great, great. <clears throat> so now let's just try to uh, solve uh, Varignon's theorem. Okay, mm -hmm. so first thing is let us draw a coordinate system first, an x axis and a y axis, a simple coordinate system, y and x. This is your origin O. Now in a coordinate system, I'll, I'll try to put everything in a different color so, the, so that you don't get uh, mixed up. So let's form the first force P. This is your P. And let's have your second force Q. This is your Q. Now, by the virtue of P and Q, there will be a third force that is being formed, the resultant force. Let's call that R. And let's put that over here. Now, this is your third force, the resultant force. Let's call this R. Red is depicted as P. Violet is depicted as Q and resultant is depicted uh, in brown. So all these three forces are subtending an angle to the x-axis, the horizontal uh, in, in the coordinate system. All these three forces, the P, Q and the resultant are subtending to a particular angle to the coordinate system. Now let's just name those angles as well. P is subtending an angle of theta 1. Q is subtending an angle of theta 2, while R is subtending an angle of theta. So uh, just make sure that you don't confuse with uh, these uh, color codes and angles. Your P is subtending theta 1 your Q is subtending theta 2 and your R is subtending theta, all in their respective color codes. Now, the theorem says the moment generated by the individual forces, the sum of the moment generated by the individual forces should be equal to the moment generated by the resultant. That is the straightforward theorem. Whatever the moment that is being generated by P, plus the moment that is generated by Q should be equal to the total moment generated by the resultant R. Now, in order to prove this, let us take an arbitrary point somewhere 
on y axis and call that a okay now the moment the definition of the moment itself is nothing but the force that is being applied multiplied to the perpendicular distance about that particular point of axis so we need to take the perpendicular distance of that particular point of axis to every force that is being acted upon so for instance for the force q i am taking the perpendicular distance over here let me just depict that in dotted line that is the perpendicular distance of q similarly for r i'm taking the perpendicular distance for r and lastly for p perpendicular distance for p as you can see i have uh, depicted the perpendicular uh, nature by putting that <coughs> 90 degree angle for all those triangles that have been subtended over there now there is a small uh, geometrical uh, perspective that you have to see over here all the angles that are being subtended by the virtue of p q or r will be equal to the angles subtended to its point of rotation for instance if you see the force p which is subtending an angle of theta this particular angle which is over here should also be theta 1 okay because if you if you see in a typical triangle the sum of all the angles inside a triangle is equal to 180 degrees and if you try to see this as x if you try to see this as x and you know one uh, angle as 90 degrees and the other one will be known as 90 minus x that is because in a coordinate system it is 90 degrees okay in 90 degrees you are minusing x in order to get the third angle that is this now when you add all these three together ultimately you will be left with x is equal to theta so that is the reason why you will be having the same angle between a is o a and whatever name that you are going to put it over here if you put it as a b o a b will be equal to your p o let's just put this as z p o z okay clear till now uh, just give me a quick feedback is it clear till now is it clear just give me a quick feedback Yes. Sir. Right. So moving on. Now, once that logic is clear, let's try to uh, put this in uh, on a much more clear note. So the theorem simply states that the sum of moments about point A. all the forces which is p and q together i'm just depicting p and q together as f should be equal to the moment of the resultant at a Th this is simply the statement where what varignon theorem is giving and we need to prove this so let's just simply put it on uh, paper here moment of a force at p about a can be written as m about a generated by force p moment of force at q about a m a q moment of force r at a it's it's everything is the same thing but moment of force r of r at a is equal to m at a which is the resultant 
Now, we know that moment is nothing but force into the perpendicular distance. Now, if you see the dotted lines which we have created over here, let's give them a, a, a value, a, a, a depiction in order to uh, make sure that the formula is going in a right direction. So the distance where your P is connecting to A, let's call it as T1. Your distance where your R is connecting to A, we'll call it D. And the distance where your Q is connecting to A, let's call it D2. Now we know moment is nothing but force into distance. The force which is acting for P is P multiplied by the distance which is D1. The force which is acting by Q is Q multiplied by the distance D2. While the resultant force which is R is multiplied by the distance D. So you have the, the corresponding moments that have, been, uh, that have been generated by those particular forces. Let's just give them equation numbers, equation one, equation two. Uh, you can just leave that since this is the main resultant equation, I'm not uh, naming it any. Now, <clears throat> let's consider one uh, uh, case over here. Let's, let's con consider the main resultant case. If you see a triangle which is connected to the resultant, I'll just try to shade that in a different color. Uh, yeah. If you see this particular triangle over there, which has been subtended by the resultant R, I'll try to draw that separately over here. This is your 90 degree. This is O, this is A, and this is D. Okay. Now we also know that this angle, which is over here is equal to theta because of the basic geometry, which you have done over here. So by using the trigonometrical equations, we can stay, we can say that cos theta is equal to D by AO that is adjacent by hypotenuse. We can simply write this as D is equal to AO cos theta. Okay. Now, since we have our D, we directly substitute in this particular equation. So this can be written as moment about A, the resultant moment about A is equal to R multiplied by AO cos theta. This can be further written as AO R cos theta. If you, if you had already noticed, R cos theta, this is a familiar uh, expression where we uh, came across uh, in finding the, uh, uh, the composition uh, when we are doing the components of force, we, we know that in order to calculate the X component, we multiply the, uh, the resultant with its corresponding angle. For instance, uh, F X is equal to F cos theta, F Y is equal to F sine theta. If you remember the, uh, the basic uh, components of force, fx is equal to f cos theta and fy is equal to f sine theta. The same uh, uh, analogy is being followed over here where r cos theta over here can be simply depicted with rx. This is your basic uh, components of force. Is there any doubt? Uh, so somebody had a doubt? No, sir. Uh, am I clear? You're following uh, clearly? Right. Yes, uh, Sajiran, uh, you raised a hand. You have a doubt? No, sir. No, sir. It, by mistake. Okay. Okay. Right. So, moving on. This is one part of the theorem. 
Now the second part, you you have you try to prove the left hand side of this particular theorem. That is, uh, m uh, sorry, the right hand side of this theorem. M uh, about a of r is nothing but a o r x. You, you just proved this part. Now let's just try to prove this particular part and see if both are matching. I mean, both are equating in order to make sure that the theorem is proven. So. If you see sigma m about a, that is the sum of all forces that are going about a, this can be represented as moment of p about a plus moment of q about a. You can simply depict this as in this particular uh, expression. Now, if you see the moment about p is nothing but p times d1 and the moment about q which is q times d2. Okay. Now, if you further simplify that, the, the, the same uh, uh, ex, uh, 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 solution can be uh, represented in P and Q as well. Just like your resultant, uh, we found uh, uh, the value of D, the distance between the perpendicular distance, we can equate the same uh, procedure to your uh, forces P and Q, where you can you can write this as p into ao cos theta 1 plus q into ao cos theta 2 i'm just changing the color of the pen that is not uh, okay if you further simplify this you can write this as AO into P cos theta 1 plus AO into Q cos theta 2. Again, P cos theta 1, Q cos theta 2, which is in the same uh, uh, form of this particular fx is equal to f cos theta expression. So you can just replace that AO into Px plus AO into Qx. If you take AO common, AO into PX plus QX. Okay. Now, if you see this particular part of the equation again, PX plus QX, this is nothing but the sum of all the horizontal forces that are happening in that particular force system. The sum of all horizontal components that are happening on the force system is equal to the resultant of the horizontal component if you go back to again the previous lectures uh, all the horizontal uh, forces that are happening in that particular force system can be equated to the horizontal component of the resultant itself so in the same analogy if you replace px plus qx with rx which is the resultant ao is equal to the horizontal component of the resultant now if you see Equation three is similar to equation. Let's just name this as four equation four. There you have it. You have your left hand side is equated to your right hand side. Your AO into R times uh, AO into RX is equal to AO into RX. That is nothing but the moment of the resultant equals to, equals to the sum of all the forces. I mean, sum of all the moments generated around that particular uh, or uh, in that all in for the entire four systems. Sorry. Okay, clear till now. I mean, clear. Uh, is this understood? Just give me a quick feedback. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Great, great. So we'll just uh, keep it to Varignon's theorem only. I think this theorem itself is uh, slightly overwhelming. Uh, make sure you uh, understand this theorem. Uh, actually, I have derived the theorem in a much more detailed, intricate way. Uh, you need not explain it to this level. I mean, this is purely for your understanding. You should be able to understand how these two are being equated. That is why I tried to show you how uh, we are doing the geometrical part, how we are doing the trigonometrical part, and how we are putting everything together in this particular uh, uh, theorem. But if you uh, see your uh, PPT, 
uh, let me just put your ppt on screen yeah if you see your ppt it is given on a much more easier uh, tone uh, they have simply uh, it has simply been uh, equated uh, the resultant uh, uh, side is been equated to the individual forces side uh, you have two different diagrams over there along with a simple very straightforward uh, solution for the entire uh, theorem you can do either of this whichever you feel comfortable there are other uh, uh, expressions that are given in different textbooks in, um, in different uh, books you can find a different theorem but ultimately the logic the fundamental behind the theorem is similar some of all the moments in that particular force system should be equal to the moment of that resultant in that force system so just uh, try to uh, uh, correlate with the solution that has been in the key, uh, the ppt as well i will share this theorem on uh, edit or i'll put this on whatsapp uh, somehow i'll try to share this with you as well just try to equate or correlate everything with the ppt as well but if you are able to depict what's in the ppt that is fine and lastly uh, i'll just discuss uh, the composition of non concurrent force systems uh this is something uh, similar to that what you have previously learned uh when it comes to composition you uh, already know that there is a magnitude a direction for a particular resultant you have uh, these two uh, components that one has to uh, calculate the magnitude is depicted with uh, r which is equal to root under uh, sorry root over sigma times the square of x forces in x direction plus uh sigma of all the forces in y direction squared uh, this is the magnitude of the resultant and the direction of the resultant is depicted with angle theta which is nothing but the tan inverse of sigma fy by uh yeah sigma fy by sigma fx and when it comes to non concurrent force systems there is another thing called the position of the resultant so the position of the resultant is is something that now you know the magnitude of the force that is happening over there uh, at what level of the force what is the intensity of the uh, resultant that is happening by the virtue of the formula r is equal to root under etc etc you know the direction at which the force is being applied by the virtue of theta tan inverse sigma fy by, uh, by sigma fx but now you need to know the exact position of that particular resultant in this in this particular slide if you see uh, in this figure uh the resultant r now if you don't know the position of the resultant r this r this resultant force can exist anywhere in the coordinate system so it is a necessity to identify where exactly this particular resultant uh vector is occurring in that particular coordinate system and that is why we call uh, we we intend to find the position of the resultant now the position of the resultant can be simply found uh by this particular expression x intercept equals to uh sigma m by sigma fy the same thing goes with y intercept where sigma m by sigma fx will give you that particular position if you see the diagram over here uh if you are calculating the y intercept you will get a coordinate point in y axis and if you are calculating the x intercept you will be getting the coordinate point on the x axis combining those two particular points you will be getting the exact position of that resultant in the coordinate system okay uh any any doubts uh, till now uh, just wanted to know is it clear is it clear is there any doubt
I'm sorry, I just uh, unmuted my uh, microphone. Uh, as I was just saying, uh, it's a very important uh, uh, theorem. It's a very important fundamental in engineering mechanics. It's called Wagnon's theorem. Simply, some of all the forces in a force, I mean, some of all the moments of a forces in a force system should be equal to the moment of the resultant in that particular force system. Okay, so try not to complicate it too much. It's a very simple theorem. It's just that you need to categorize this into different parts. We just try to equate the left hand side to right hand side. We created individual angles. We created individual distances to the corresponding force systems. And then we took one particular triangle in order to get that D value. That is the, the value of the distance to which it is uh, the force is acting upon. And we just substituted that in your main moment formula that is force into distance resultant into distance d and that's how you equate the entire uh, Varignon's theorem to its right hand side or left hand side whichever that is okay with this i'll conclude uh, i'm open for doubts if you have any doubts please let me know Any doubts, uh, please, I'll, uh, I'll take any doubts from you. No, sir. No, sir. Great. With this, I'll conclude today's class. Uh, I hope you had a good session because this is a slightly new uh, way of uh, trying to put things together. I think uh we might follow this if it's uh, uh good for you guys i mean uh, this is the best way uh, that is possible to deliver through a digital uh, medium uh, so we'll solve a few problems on this particular uh, uh, concept of varignon's theorem uh, the summation of all the moments uh, and all the problems that are related to it in further classes uh, until then uh, have a good day see you man bye